If you're not familiar with these five SOIL principles, you're most likely writing your React code wrong. So these are the five solid clean code principles that you should follow to write readable, maintainable, and testable code. And you're probably wondering what are these and how can I grasp on those and how can I learn those in one video? Well, in this series video, I'm gonna go through these five principles as quick as possible with you to actually give you as much understanding and as much of information about how you can start utilizing those principles in your React code and your React components. And for a quick disclaimer before we get started, so this particular tutorial or this guide assumes you already have a basic knowledge of how TypeScript works or how typing works in type screen in general. Simply just because solid principles are meant for OOP or oriented object programming languages and actually TypeScript provides a great way to work with those with interfaces and types and everything. Also, solid principles are originally made for the oriented object programming as I said before and sometimes or for this particular video tutorial, we're going to go ahead and try to abstract those and use them on React itself, which means sometimes you might find this a little bit difficult to work in K or some like case scenarios for React or maybe some of your components can can't actually apply with solid. Also, if you want to have more better knowledge, you can go into this like medium blog, you're going to find it down below. It actually has everything that you would want to learn about solid for OOP and actually to understand this tutorial better. I really advise you guys to go in and follow this particular kind of like medium article with really awesome illustrations. So solid is the actual acronym for actual five principles that allows you to write much more readable, maintainable and testable code. And those five principles were developed by Robert G. Martin, who's also named or AKA uh, Uncle Bob, who has like books like Clean Book and other design principles books that actually made a huge impact on how we write code as developers or programmers, how we think and how we make our code way much easier to read and maintainable when it comes to like collaboratively working on code. And today we're gonna implement those solid principles. I'm gonna see how you can use those solid five principles into React ecosystem and how you can use those five principles to write way much better code. So the five principles are single responsibility, list cough substitution, open close, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. The first and the most important principle, which is the SRP principle, or what stands for the single responsibility principle. And for the bare bones definition of the first principle, it means every class should have only one responsibility. And a class in our case in here for React, it basically means a component, a function, or a module. So in the case in here, I tried to go through two different scenarios. One is the best scenario and how you can use that. The second is the good scenario and how you want to utilize and observe and actually respect the SRP principle. So for our example in here, we got like a simple component. This is just all of it. It's just a single component. All it does, it takes products and it allows you to filter products. First, it fetches products. Second, it uses the use effects to fetch those products. Obviously, it handles filtering of this one. And obviously, it's going to do the filtering part in here, but like filtering products uses use memo and so on and so forth. And last but not least, you actually got like the rendering part in which we are simply just rendering a bunch of stuff. First, we are rendering the rating kind of like stars and everything. And we got just like a div in here where we're going to filter and render our products. And as you clearly imagine here, we're doing the map, we're returning every single product. And these divs in here, these bunch of bullshit kind of stuff that you can clearly see in here, which is super annoying and you don't exactly understand what's going on. These, this particular one, one, this is like the start of the dev and the end of the dev in here. This is responsible for rendering a single product. So this huge and very big kind of component is responsible for fetching products, filtering products, and eventually rendering the filtered or fetched products. So this would look something like this, and you can use like the rating kind of stars in here to go ahead and filter and go through the different products. So if you take a quick look in here and try to actually observe or apply the principle, the single responsibility principle in here, we see this component, it's not doing one thing, but rather is doing a a bunch of stuff at single place. It's not utilizing the React kind of features of like components and composing components to split up this code into much more smaller components and like reuse them uh, over the whole component here. But rather than that, all he's doing is just putting everything into a single component and he's doing everything at once. So this is sort of very bad. So the first thing in here I always observe is actually when there is every like 
whenever there is a math function in here that's looping through and trying to render a bunch of stuff, especially if these stuff in here are actually like huge components, like a product component, this one in here, it represents a product component. So what I simply do in here, I go ahead and create a brand new component, I call a product component here. And if you notice, I'm using TypeScript already in here. And this is just the product component, all it does, it takes a bunch of stuff in here, it takes the properties or the you know, the props it needs to render it like the title image and everything. And it renders the component as simple as that. So for the good implementation, I do this. And this is actually going to turn to something like this, where the products and it just passing the product he needs to render. And that is it instead of like whole ugliness that's going on in here, we're rendering a bunch of stuff at once, which makes no sense. I also look up what what, what else I need to actually split up, I need to split up this actually rating kind of filtering UI in here or GSX, and I put it on to a separate component too. So the same thing in here goes a filter, I put that in here, and it just access it or give it like the access to whatever state it needs and handling through the props. And also this will look something like this eventually. Now the next thing I always do is actually whenever I find a new state, I like whenever I see on a component, there is a new state, and there is a use effect, I immediately realize that I need to build a custom hook or create a custom hook that's going to take care of both of these into a way much simpler and easier to read and easier to maintain kind of custom hook that's going to do all these bunch of stuff for us in a single function. So here I created a hooks folder, and I'm just going to call this a use products. So use products is going to be another hook that's going to have a state for set products and products, it's going to do the fetching products, and it's going to use effects. And eventually, all it does is just going to return products for us. I don't care about anything else, because it's handling everything behind the scenes. And that's what I'm doing in here for the good implementation, I'm just doing use products, and that's just going to work fine. And the next thing I also need here is actually the use rate filter. So if I go back to the bad implementation, I'm here, I'm doing filtering on my own with the use memo, and I'm handling the rating in here and updating the state, a bunch of stuff, right? So if I go to the good implementation, I'm using the use filter or rate filter in here, which is another hook I built up. And this one is just to take a state it has handle rating and it returns both of these functions in here for us. So now with the final version, if you compare this really awesomely good implementation versus this bad implementation, you can see the difference. And you can see how this SRP or single responsibility principle can actually improve our code way much better. Now second for the O principle or the open close principle, and from like its bare bone definition, we know that software entities should be open for extension, but should be closed for modification. And because this can be also be applied really well on react and its components kind of like a system, we don't need to actually bend or we don't need to shorten or extend any of that extension or basically that definition to fit the react system because it just can work as is. Now, if you take, for example, this button example in here, this button component here for the OCP or the open close principle. So if you take a closer look in here, we got an interface, obviously, this is an interface or a TypeScript interface, we got a role. Now, particularly this role, what allows us to do is actually define whether we want a back or forward or a main icon, or what is the actual role of this particular button. Now, obviously, because this role can be extended and can like, for example, let's say later on, we want to add another role in here to be like to go like 404 or something, I don't know, or maybe uh, a different not found kind of like icon, something of that sort. Now, let's imagine this particular scenario where we do that. As you see, for every single role in here, we need to actually do role equals forward and understand or go ahead and render a particular thing conditionally, and so on and so forth. And if you ever add another one, it's going to be like adding always a new role and a new role on your role, and that's going to break or bend the actual definition of the open close principle, because we are not going to like go ahead and extend that, but rather we're going to modify that every single time. So we don't want to modify the source code, but rather we want to extend open that source code without like modification directly into the source code. So this is the actual example. And this is how it looks now with the go back and go home. Now, how can we make this work? And likely for us, this works really well with react because react can actually take through props an actual react node. So which means in here, I can pass in an icon instead of a role, and I can go in and comment both of these roles in here. And instead, I can go ahead and render an icon. So let me just go and go icon in here. And through this icon in here, I can put whatever icon and of course, obviously, this is going to be extended outside of the button itself, it's not going to be like 
inside of the mod button that means the source code is not going to change but it's going to be extended from whatever component is going to use it next in case in here i can go ahead and comment this one and then comment the icon same thing in here now as you in here i define different icons for different buttons and that's going to make us extend the functionality of the button without modifying the source code and for the third principle which is the list of substitution what it defines as subtype objects should be substitutable for super type objects so let's take for example this particular example in here we got a search input and it's actually more than a search input it's it's more of like a search bar in here and for example in here we got let's say we got a search bar in here we can actually go ahead and like you know put something to search whatever and for the actual code we got something like this so for example we got this is the search input the search input in our case in here is going to represent the subtype because this one is going to extend from the actual input or the bare minimum HTML input, which means this is going to play the role of the super type. And since the input in here actually needs props more than it were basically, for example, we're actually going to be using because an HTML input can have a plethora of bunch of props that were attributes that you're not aware of. So every single time, if you use a component like a search input in here where it uses a bare minimum or another component that needs props you need to make sure that all the props of that super type component which is the input in our case in here should be passed through as well and we should always always for example create like an interface this is the search input props interface now for example let's say we got only the is large boolean in here now that's good right we're passing the is large and everything and to basically fulfill the actual principle to fulfill the list cough principle in here we need to make sure that we extend from the super type kind of elements or the super type input HTML attribute as well, because we want to go ahead and grab the props from that and actually make sure we're actually using that as well. In here. And for a better way to use this, actually just do a double dot, do rest props in here, copy this one to make sure you just only using the rest of the props in here because you're using some of the others as the value and the on change as well. I know this kind of principle is a bit weird and might feel a little bit kind of like uh, it doesn't make sense in that kind of case scenario or something. But what you should actually keep in mind to be able to use and actually fulfill this scenario or this principle on your own, that whenever you're actually using a component like a search input, then that particular component uses another component inside of it, which is like composed off into this component, like an input in our case in here, make sure to always pass the props of that composed or, or that like kind of child component that you're actually using inside of the main component, always pass the props of that, like every single prop of it, make sure you pass it through and make sure you delegate the props in here from that component or from the extended components through to the base component in here. And the third principle, which is interface segregation. And for the bare bone definition of this particular principle, which is that clients should not depend upon interfaces they don't use. And in our case in here for React, this should become something like components shouldn't depend on props they are not going to use. And if you take a look at this particular example, which is the same kind of scenario or same demo we used before, we got a product in here. Simply, this is like what a product looks like. We got an interface that describes what a product has, like an ID, title, price, rate, and image. And we got the props of that particular product. Now, inside of that, obviously, because this is a product, it needs all the attributes with all the properties of the product has, and you can use them freely. But let's say, and let's imagine, inside of that, to render the actual image of a product or the thumbnail of that product, we're using a separate component called thumbnail. And through this particular component, we're passing an actual product into it. So if you go inside the thumbnail, we are actually all we're doing, particularly, we're extracting the product's objects, which has everything alongside the image. It has literally everything, all these properties and even more. So we're passing all the products in here and literally all we are actually using and all we are utilizing is the image from the products. We don't care about any other attribute. We only care about the image and we're using that image to render an actual image in here. I know sometimes we do a really dummy kind of stuff and I did like this kind of stuff myself uh, before knowing about these principles and when it was like a newbie and new to React and everything. But now, uh, nobody should actually do that. So since the thumbnail in here only depends on a single prop and needs a single prop to actually operate and work, which is the image prop in here, or more particularly the image URL, all we need to do is actually here, like for example, do an image URL or just an image. I don't need a products anymore, right? I don't need you. And I'm gonna change that to props and I'm change that to image URL. As simple as that, and actually go ahead and use the image URL. Like this component doesn't need to know about the product, doesn't need to care about any other property of the product. He only cares about the image URL to render an actual image. 
that is it. If we go back in here, save that real quickly, go back as curious there is an error because I need to do image URL and it can just go to product dot image to pass in that URL. Let me fix that. And that is it that should fix it. And that should make it way much better. And that should fulfill the actual interface segregation principle. And the last principle we should grasp on which is one of my favorite principles alongside the first one, which is the dependency inversion. And for the bare bones definition of this is an entity should depend upon abstractions, not concretion. And when it comes to react, this is more of like making react components more of like a standalone component and allow them to extend rather than allowing them to like, you know, completely rewrite the component or modify the component, which can actually ridiculously take you to something like unexpected bugs or unexpected behaviors, because a lot of people are collaboratively working on the same projects. And sometimes they want to change a component that is being used by different other kind of pages or different components, that's going to cause a disaster. So for our demo in here for the last principle, I'm going to use it like a sign in form where there is an email or password and it allows it just to sign in or particularly just log into the application. Now if you take quickly on the source code for this or behind the scenes of this form, we got simply a form with two state email and password, we got a function or a method that takes handling of the submit. So whenever you submit the form, this is the function that's going to be executed. And Last but not least, we got a bunch of GSX stuff that's gonna go ahead and take care of rendering. And obviously in here we got a form and we're doing on submit to handle the submit. Now everything is good in here, right? I mean, all good. This is a form, it works pretty fine, it does submit in. It has no issues. And we're simply just utilizing this form like this, just calling form and it can do everything behind the scenes. And let's say this form in here is actually doing the login and everything. Let's say sometimes we're like, we want to utilize this on a different part of the application to do the same thing for the login. I want to utilize the same component, but I want something different, which is I want to go ahead and submit this data into a different URL on here because this handle submit is baked into the actual form inside of the component itself. This is merely like impossible. We need to sometimes like go ahead and change that or maybe introduce another on submit kind of like a uh, function that's going to go into here, maybe introduce like an if statement that goes like if this do this, if not this do this, a bunch of really creepy stuff or creepy solutions that you don't want to need to. But there's one really good solution. So imagine this, I'm going to introduce an on submit kind of like a prop function that's going to be passed through from outside of the form component, I'm going to go in and grab this from the props, I don't need this handle submit anymore, I'm going to create a handle submit too, which means it's only going to call on submit and it's going to pass in the event in here, or rather what I would rather go in and pass in which is the email and the password because that's exactly what is taken in here, email and password. Simple as that. Now handle submit two should be going in place of the original submit. Now every single time the form is going to be submitted, this handle submit two is going to be taken care of the on submit is going to be executed, it's going to pass an email password into the original submit, which is coming outside of the form component. And to better utilize that we go ahead and create a separate component called like connected form or something like that. I think this is a really good convention to call it like a connected because it's more of like connected into an API. It's not just like a dummy form that can be used anywhere. And we can just define our own handle submit, I go and do a form and it provide that submit in here. And this now can be used separately. And as well as this form in here, or this form component can be used separately and can have like have two kind of like components two connected forms, each one does a different completely different handle submit on its own. That's super nice. And if you go to the index in here, instead of using the form, now we can use the connected form and there's no changes. But what with the change in here, I'm using a different component that actually provides an abstractions and provides the actual implementation to the abstracted form component, rather than just using a full concrete kind of like uh, components on its own. And this kind of like kills the abstraction kind of like mindset of react components and the reusability. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this really awesome tutorial of the solar principles in react. And without further ado, catch you hopefully in the next ones.